Welcome to another video. This week, we will be learning how to score scenes involving overwhelming joy and excitement. In other words, we'll be learning how to write music that sounds like this. First step to scoring any emotion is to start by figuring out how to describe that emotion in the first place. And for this, there are at least three different things that we need to consider. The valence, size, and movement. Now, valence refers to how bright or dark your emotion is. Since excitement is a fun and generally bright emotion to experience, this means that we'll need to write music that also sounds fun and bright. Size refers to how overwhelming or all-consuming an emotional experience can be. The more overwhelming the emotion, the larger your music will need to sound. This means that if we want to portray something like joyful, overwhelming excitement, we're going to need to write some pretty big sounding music. Then finally, movement refers to how energizing or depleting your emotion tends to be. You can also think of this as how much energy is involved with expressing your emotion. Since excitement is typically a very energizing experience that can involve laughing, clapping, dancing, etc., we're going to want to write some music that also contains lots of movement. So, all in all, the kind of excitement that we want to portray in this video can be described as bright, large, and high energy. This means that the music we want to compose to portray this emotion should also sound bright, large, and high energy. The simplest and most straightforward of these three descriptors is the word bright. For this, I can just rely on two simple strategies. The first is that I need a chord progression that sounds bright, which means it uses mostly major chords. And then I need a melody that can be played by higher register instruments, like the violins or flutes. For this piece, I used something called period structure to write both. Period structure is a simple and supremely useful pattern in music, and it can be used to write effective melodies and chord progressions. The concept is pretty simple. Just start with an initial idea. In this case, two chords that I think work really well together. C major and D major. The next step is to come up with a new two chord idea that I like. In this case, F major and G major. The third step is to just simply repeat your first idea. C major and D major. Before finishing the whole thing off with a simple plagal cadence. F major, C major. Now, you don't have to use a plagal cadence in your own progressions. That's just what I chose to use. But you do want to use some sort of cadence that you like and think sounds good with your chord progression. Now, if you want to learn more about writing chord progressions, make sure to check out my playlist on Harmony for Composers. But in the meantime, you can also use this pattern to write a melody. Once again, start with a simple two-bar idea. Then come up with a new idea to fill the next two bars. Then repeat your original idea once again, sometimes with a little bit of variation if you'd like. And then finally just come up with another simple two bar idea to end the whole thing. And once again, if you do want to learn more about writing melodies, make sure to check out my playlist on melody writing for composers. So with that, I've got the valence portion of my motion taken care of. I've got a bright sounding chord progression and a melody that's just waiting to be given to a high register instrument. So 
So next, let's move on to our size. The type of excitement that we are trying to score is the kind of overwhelming and joyful type. The kind of excitement that makes it really hard to focus on anything else. You know, sort of like being a little kid on Christmas morning. This means that I want my music to also sound big and overwhelming. For this piece, I used a couple of strategies to achieve this. First, I made sure to use the entire orchestra. Strings, brass, woodwinds, and percussion each play a role in my arrangement, and none of them get left out. This gives my arrangement a literally large size in terms of orchestration. Secondly, I used the orchestra to fill out all three registers, low, middle, and high. If I had wanted to create a smaller or more intimate arrangement, I could have just stuck to one or two registers. But to get the size that I wanted, I made sure to take up multiple octaves and include voices in each of the three registers. Finally, my third strategy was to make sure to include many different layers in my arrangement, which actually brings us to our third descriptor, movement. Since excitement tends to be a highly energizing emotion to experience, we need to find ways to write music that also contains lots of energy and movement. My favorite strategy for this is to just use lots of different rhythmic layers. So in addition to my melody, sustained chords, and bass line, I also wrote three different ostinati. The first ostinato was played by the violas and bassoons. <laughs> The second ostinato was played by my clarinets, oboes, and second violins. And the third ostinato was played by my flutes. And I might be sounding a bit repetitive at this point, but if you do want to learn more about writing ostinati and or counter melodies, check out the links in the description of this video. In addition to all of this, I also use the glockenspiel to play a rhythmic embellishment of the melody and the harp on arpeggios to add even more movement and texture. Since I was using so many different rhythmic motifs and layers, I also had the trumpets, celli, and basses act as timekeepers by playing straight eighth notes, or in the case of the basses, quarter notes, on my chords and my bass line. Adding these straight rhythms to the mix helps act as a bit of glue that gives context to the other ostinati so they don't become too overwhelming or chaotic. So after all was said and done, I ended up using eight different layers in this texture, not including the percussion, which is just a massive number that helps give both size and energy to the music. Now, if you've got a sharp eye, you may have noticed that I was using two different string sections. One that was playing rhythmic layers, like the ostinati and timekeepers, and another one dedicated to playing the sustained chords and bass line. Now, this isn't really practical for live performances, but it is a commonplace strategy for media music, like video games, films, and TV where technology, sound libraries, and the magic of recording sessions allow composers to prioritize the kind of sound they want without having to worry about the logistics of hiring hundreds of musicians to play each part in real time. In some cases, if you've got the budget, you'll just use the same string section to record both parts and just layer them together during the mixing process. And with that, we have reached the end of another video. If you are interested in learning my process for using valence, movement, and size to portray emotions, check out my online class on portraying emotions with music. 
I'll have a link and a coupon code in the description. I want to take a quick moment to thank my wonderful patrons who make videos like this one possible. I also want to thank each of you who show your support through various things like subscribing to my channel and sharing my videos. I appreciate each of you more than you know. So until next time, keep studying, keep working hard, and keep writing new music.